Today we're going to have a look at how to make a power-up bar. I've been playing a little bit of Super Stickman Golf and I really like the power-up bar on it. So basically we're going to copy that one element and show how it's made. First of all, you're going to need a few sprites for this. You can download the ones that I've used in the description, but I'll show you what you need. You, I'm going to put a black background on here to make it easy to see. You're going to need the button that you're going to press, and you see these blue lines? They're going to be the, where the corner of the screen is, and so I designed this so that it overlapped where the corner of the screen would be. You're then going to need a frame for where the power, up, power bar goes, and you're going to need the actual power bar that goes underneath it. you notice I have the other side. I have found that the, with the radial fill in Unity, to make it work on the default settings, you need to have a balanced image. Otherwise, it will pick where the center point is based upon your sprite. And this makes the center point of the sprite in the center. There are ways to do it without that, but this is the quickest and simplest way. So I'm now going to bring these into Unity and I'm going to put them in a sprites folder. And then I'm going to turn these into sprites by going from the default type to the sprite type and hitting apply. I'm going to do something I do in a lot of these tutorials, which is I'm just going to turn my camera to a black background. So first up, we're going to need a UI to put these items on. And I'm going to use Button Text Mesh Pro and I'm going to import TMP Essentials. Now we'll look at this from the back, hit frame up. With our canvas, we'll change it to camera, we'll drop the main camera in and we'll do the distance of one. You notice I do this a lot, I really like working with the camera of the screen, screen space camera because I often only want my UI to appear on one of my cameras. You can of course use it in the default setting if you prefer. I'm just going to frame that up now. With the button I'm going to make it into a square and I'm going to use the rect tool make it, and the shift key to make it reasonably big. Then I'm going to grab the button and put it into the button sprite. Now next up, I'm going to need to create a UI image. And in this image, we're going to put the power up frame. And we're going to drag the size of that image to the corners. I'm also going to reduce the size of my 3D gizmos because they're a bit big. I'm going to call that image frame. I'm going to duplicate this. And we'll drop the power up bar into it. And this is going to be my power up back. Now I'm going to duplicate this. And that's just going to be my power up bar. frame needs to be on top of those two and my text I'm just going to pull down and put over the top of the button put a number into it and make it a bit bigger and I can delete the number and then I'm going to grab the button which has everything childhood to it and bring it down to the corner of the screen, something like that. I'm just going to scale it up. 
I'm also going to change this view to orthographic. So you probably wouldn't want it quite that big in your game, but because we're just testing, I'm going to make it nice and big so it's easy to see. So now I'm going to go to my power up button image and I'm going to make that maybe green. I'm going to go to my power up back and I'm just going to make that darker. Let's hide that so we can see what we're doing. Something like that. I'm going to go to my power up and I'm maybe going to make that a red. I'm going to change the power up, the field. I'm going to have radial 360. And now you can see that it feels. I'm going to go to the point where it looks like it's you know, approximately flat, which I think is 0 0.25. I'm just going to move everything down so that it's right against the edge of the screen. I did it like this because I really, I, I did it like this because as I said I was playing Super Stickman Golf and I liked how there was no frame on the UI at the bottom of the screen and it just popped up from there. Okay, so you're going to need to note that 0.25 is your bottom number and your top number is going to be something like 4 4.8, 4.83, 4 4.9, something in that vicinity. So that's what your, when your power is full, your fill amount will be that and it will be about 0.25 when it's completely empty. And so this is all you need to do in terms of setting up your UI. We now need to create a script to actually do it. I'm going to put that into a scripts folder. And double click the script to open it in Visual Studio. First of all, we're going to add the extra libraries we're going to need, which is the Unity UI library and Text Mesh Pro, because we're going to use the Text Mesh Pro text to describe the power and a number. Next up, we'll need a couple of variables. We'll need one, which is the image, which is the power bar going up and down. And we also want the text so that we can write the text number to that. We won't necessarily need the start function, so we can get rid of that. We'll also need a few variables to keep track of whether we're powering up and the power up amount. So we'll need a boolean, which says, is the power up actually going? So are you clicking down and holding on the button? We'll need another one to sell, tell us whether our power up is going upwards or down, so the direction of it. We'll need the amount of power, so what the actual number is. And we'll also need how fast we want that slider to, or that bar to move up and down. I'm going to use power values of 0 to 100. If your game uses different numbers, you can obviously use a different range. The 0 to 100 seems like a pretty common range to me. Now you'll notice I've initialized these all to values. I've initialized them to values assuming that a power bar isn't on when the game starts and it's at zero. So let's start making the functions that we need to start the power up and to stop the power up. So when you click on the button and when you um, do your mouse up on the button. So I, and I realize on the UI, when you first do it, there's only on click, but I'll show you when we go back to Unity, how to add the different events to make this work. So the first one we'll do is starting the power up. In here, we want to set is power up to true, our amount power to zero, 
a direction to be up. And then we also want to set the text on our power amount to nothing because I feel like when we're actually clicking the button, you don't want to see the number. You only want to see the number of power after you've finished. And that's all you need to do and you'll start power up. You'll notice it is really just setting these initial variables. And power up is going to be even easier because all you need to do is set your power up to false and you need to display the text amount that's in the that's in amount power. Now what I've done here when I've displayed the amount power to string F0, what that means is it's a floating point with no decimal places. If you're interested in this and you just need to look up to string and you'll see all the different types of things you can put in here. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my decimal value and just showing the whole number part of it because I feel like, at least for me, I just want to show the number between 0 and 100 with no decimal point. So now you have your start power up and your end power up, you'll need to actually do the physical powering up of the bar. So we're going to do this in a function called PowerActive. And this PowerActive function, we're going to call in the update whenever PowerUp is true. So in here, we're going to have an if with two different cases. We're going to have the case that direction is up is true, which means that we're increasing our amount. Or if direction up is false, we're decreasing the amount. Now let's handle the is direction up is true case first. So here, the first thing we want to do is get our amount power and add time.delta time times our speed. So this will, you can change this number then to determine how fast you want the bar to move. Now we need to determine here after we've added this amount, if our amount power is greater than 100. If that's the case, it means that we've actually reached the top of the bar. And if that, and if that happens, what we need to do is change his direction up to false. And then you need to reset your amount power to 100 because you don't want to have overshot the bar. The second part isn't actually necessary, but I just do it big for neatness. So now that you've done that, you can guess that the opposite case is pretty much the same, except that you're going to be looking if it's less than zero and you're going to be decreasing your power speed. So let's copy all of this, paste it in here and change it to make it work appropriately. Now we're almost there. We just have one more case to do. I'm going to do this outside of this if statement because you're going to update the fill whenever this is called, regardless of what happens, because you're only doing it when power up is true. Now here we just need to do a little bit of maths to make it work. The first thing we want to do is get our range. And if you remember, we said that the top value of our slider 0.83 and our bottom value is 0.25 so let's do that to get our range then you need to multiply this by amount power and to turn this into a percentage because amount power is a value between 0 and 100, you need to divide by 100. If you had a range of say 0 to 500 for your power, you'd divide by 500 here instead. And the last thing you want to do is you want to add the 0 
to make it go up from the bottom otherwise it'll go from zero and you want it to actually start at 0 0.25. And now save this and let's go back to Unity and set it all up. I'm just going to drop the script onto the button. I'm going to drop the image power up into the power up. I'm going to drop the text into the text field. And I'm also going to turn our power up down so that it's completely off when we start. The next thing we're going to need to do is we don't want to use the on click event, so let's add an event trigger. And we want to add a new event type, and the type we want to do is pointer down, and we'll add another one, pointer up. And let's add an event for each of these, and just drop the button into the field. So for pointer down, we're going to start the power up. And we'll end the power up for a pointer up. So let's press play and give this a go. You can see I hold down, it just bounces up and down. If you wanted, you could make it stop when it gets to the bottom. But I noticed in Super Stickman Golf, again, it didn't do that. And I assume that was to make the game a little bit more forgiving. And then I showed the number here. I don't know whether you want to show the number or not, but I thought that it would be kind of useful to the user to see what number they had. And I thought that if they could see the number going up and down, they may actually try to stop based on the number rather than the bar. So that's how you make power up bar in unity it's pretty simple and it's also pretty useful and flexible i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did i'd really appreciate if you liked subscribed or commented it really helps me know whether you want to see more of these tutorials or not i'm always open to suggestions if there are things people want to see me do